Hello everybody, I'm your friend and neighborhood Let's Player Spider-Man and welcome you back to Let's Play Curse of Monkey Island. Last we left off, we talked to Snuggle Cakes and this time we're not gonna sing, we're gonna talk to the salty pirate here. Ahoy there, I'm Guybrush Threefwood, mighty pirate. So? So it's good to meet you, Mr. Bill. Bill? That's your pirate name, Bill? Interesting. Cutthroat Bill. Oh, I see. Well, that puts a whole new spin on it, doesn't it? It sure does. And here's a cheerful fellow. At least he seems like it. How'd you break into the hairstyling industry? I saw an ad to join a barbershop quartet. Got a problem with that? No, that must be very rewarding work. What's that supposed to mean? Mean? Well, just that, you know, cutting hair and um, singing must be just... A lot of fun. Yeah. It's like a party every day. Some days I just don't know how to contain my joy. I get giddy, and the laughter bubbles out of me like a sparkling fountain of mirth and gaiety. Okay, new topic. Promise me, Cuthbert Bill, that you will never, ever use those words again. He's so cheerful. I can almost feel the laughter inside him. What is he, dead inside? Do you really enjoy being a barber? It's a steady income. Hmm, I guess so. I mean, of course pirates and everyone needs a haircut once in a while too. Say, uh, what you eating there? Jawbreaker. Is it good? Yep. You don't say much, do you? Nope. Jawbreakers. They're pretty much just lollipops without the stick, aren't they? There, there's a lot of it, very good jailbreakers out there. I remember in the in my youth, I used to have this like it was like a uh, tin box or a tin can that had these powdered jailbreakers in them that were uh, flavored with pineapple. Those were damn good. That's a really good jawbreaker there, huh? Yep. Well, that's just terrific, isn't it? Yep. Guybrush, if you want it, why don't you just ask for it? Instead of trying to go, you you know, the long way around. Boy, I sure could go for a jawbreaker right about now. Yep. I said I sure could go for a jawbreaker right about now. I hope you find one. I don't think he's getting your hints. You gonna finish that jawbreaker? Sure am. Okay, just checking. Guybrush, you're trying too hard. Nothing I love more than a good jawbreaker. Me too. Yeah, see, when you look at it that way, we're really not all that different, you and I. Whatever. He's not gonna give it to you. Could I have your jawbreaker? No. Told you so. Did I ever ask any pirate stories from Snuggle Cakes? It's been a pleasure. Bye. I don't think I remember asking him about any stories. Let's ask him about him. I bet you have a ton of cool pirate stories. No, I couldn't. Oh, come on. I'd really like to hear some of... The year was 1675. We were on a course towards the wreck of the Rattling Phlegm. Our rattling days were phlegm. filled with songs of the voyage and the untold riches we'd find at our destination. Who would call their ship Two Phlegm? Into our journey, we realized something was horribly wrong. Actually, I guess I would call a ship Phlegm. I'm all about silly names. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you were haunted by the spiteful ghost of a former captain? Sounds like LeChuck to me. Was it some kind of seasickness? In a manner of speaking, we were all stricken with a melody. A diabolical song that I shall never forget. La 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 Hey, that's the hey, theme that's song. that's kinda catchy. Aye, all too catchy for a crew of 50 men confined to a ship hundreds of miles from port. No one could think of anything else, and many threw themselves into the sea rather than hear any more of the incessant humming. We returned with but eight of our crew left. The doomed voyage of the Obsessivo Compulsivo will haunt me forever. The Obsessive Compulsive. 
So you all had had OCD. Well, that's not a good thing, especially where on when you're on the sea. Whoa! Look at the time. Got a scoop. But still, the theme song is very catchy, and I like it. I've always liked it. I could hum it all day, and not get bored. Hey, Bill. You got pirate stories? Pirate stories. Got any? Okay. Here's a story. I started out as a crewman on the raging Tightwad, sailing out of Puerto Pollo. Tightwad. The captain was a master treasure hunter, a diviner from some ancient secret society. He had some weird fifth sense when it came to finding objects of value. Fifth? Yeah, don't you mean sixth? Don't you mean sixth sense? No. By some cruel trick of nature, he was born without taste buds. So he could but eat his anything. His senses took over and gave him an uncanny ability to find treasure. We left port without a map, guided only by the captain's keen senses. We spent the first week going around in circles until we realized the crew's gold earrings were throwing the captain off. After we tossed all our jewelry, gold coins, and belt buckles overboard, we got back on course. Yeah, your captain sounds like a freak show. Your captain sounds like a real freak show. Many of us on board started to think the same thing. We sailed for two years, and had finally started back to Plunder Island. But just as we started to doubt him, he paid off. We found sunken treasure right off the coast. Wait a second. Was it an enormous pile of jewelry and gold coins and belt buckles at the bottom of the bay? Exactly. How did you know that? I just had a feeling. Yeah, had a feeling. Or maybe just that the whole crew that he was in was really stupid. Do you know any more pirate stories? Want the story about how I slit the throat of the annoying little pirate who kept asking me questions? Is something troubling you? I guess you are. And how can you call Guybrush little? He's smaller than Guybrush. Like, half his size. Burlier, yeah, is a mo much more bulky, but still shorter. It's been a pleasure. Bye. And there is a way, actually, to get the jawbreaker. Let's do it. You know, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. I think we've, well, we've bonded. Uh, something troubling you there, Cutthroat Bill? It's a choking pirate. Hi. I think he needs help, so let's help him. How did you do that? Oh, it was nothing, really. Just sudden pressure applied below the sternum to expel a foreign object from the windpipe. That's the Heimlich amazing. maneuver. I owe you my life. From now on. Yes. From now on, that will be known as the Threepwood Maneuver. Nah. Of course not, because it's Heimlich. It's only got a little bit of spitting hair on it. Well, it was in Bill's mouth just now. What do you expect? Ugh, gross. It's got someone else's spitting hair all over it. And yet you all the time wanted it. And now you're complaining that you have it. Ugh, you're an idiot. It's a comb. Probably made from the jawbone of some near-extinct sea mammal. Ah, hands off that comb or I'll have your bangs, you thieving dog. Well, excuse me, Uncle Scrooge. I, 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 I mean, Barber Pirate. He's not Uncle Scrooge. He could be. It's the same voice actor, if you ever watch DuckTales. Coiffures for the Discerning Pirate. Spring Edition. Ooh, sounds like a good book, if you want to become a barber. It's a rock, and it's a paperweight. Well, it works well. He looks like a true professional. Indeed he does. He seems irritable. Indeed he does. Ahoy there, I'm Guybrush Threepwood, and I'm a mighty pie. Quiet. Red, huh? Don't distract him while he's working on me. Aye, laddie. You'll have to wait your turn. It's the pirate we. 
Ever seen a Scottish pirate? Well, now you have. He even has a kilt. Ahoy there, I'm Guybrush Threepwood. I see, and I don't care. Right, he's a Frenchman. So no matter, no wonder he looks irritable. I'm a mighty pirate. Ha! What do you mean, ha? I mean just what I said. Ha! If you're a mighty pirate, then I'm bold. Oh, don't jinx yourself. You never know what could happen. <laughs> I'm mighty enough to defeat LeChuck twice. LeChuck? Ha! Even if he's dead, there's just no excuse for that hair. So you just love your hair more than life, huh? So you're a ship captain, huh? Not just any ship captain. Don't tell me you've never heard of Captain Rene Rothingham. No, I've never I'm heard of Captain Rothingham. I'm only the most cunning and well-groomed captain ever to say of the Caribbean. Cunning? Maybe. Well-groomed? Definitely. Irritable? Totally. Well, how'd you like to join my crew? Me? Serve on your crew? Please don't make me break into hysterical laughter while this buffoon is working on my hair. Hey, you cannot just go call him a buffoon right there. Did you know you're starting to go gray? I most certainly am not. Well, your hair looks gray. Uh, don't get me wrong, gray hair suits you. It doesn't... I mean, of course it would. But, uh, I don't have to worry about that for several years. You look old enough. If I were you, I'd worry more about those split ends. Split ends? I'll have you know I've killed men for comments less slanderous than that. Then why don't you come at me, bruh? Come at me, bruh. No? <laughs> Coward. You've got a bald spot starting here in the back. What? You're lying, of course. If you say so. All I know is that there's definitely some kind of shine going on back here. You seem irritable. Is it from your dry scalp? My scalp is lovingly massaged with the finest creams and oils in the world. Twice daily. Yeah, that's a little more than I wanted to know. Yeah, that petty jobs and insults mean nothing to me. Definitely not something we wanted to hear, is it? They're doing great things with dandruff shampoo these days. Mm -hmm. I suggest you leave, boy, before you force me to defend my honor. Well, almost there, I guess. Run for your life! I'm sure the authorities probably have the situation under control. But just in case, Babel, more moisturizer. So you want to save your hair, but not your life, if there really was a fire. Let's try to get him off the chair. Rabbit dogs are on the loose! Get out, now! I don't hear anything. There are no rabbit dogs on the loose. That's just what they want you to think. Exactly. They could be sneaky rabbit dogs, you know. There could be ninja rabbit dogs. You never know. There's an axe-wielding maniac at the door! Flee! Perhaps you should offer yourself as a sacrifice so the rest of us may be saved. Do you really think that would work if it's a crazed axe-wielding murderer? He would just chop everyone to pieces. <sighs> He's really irritable. The calls are coming from within the barbershop. You must get out immediately. I have no idea what you're talking about. Leave us alone. You know, ghosts. Dead people. Trying to haunt the place and make you leave before they throw stuff at you. Poltergeist. Storms are coming. Better get a move on. Could be a twister. Then I'm most definitely staying inside. The humidity does horrible things to my hair. I'm sure it does. But then again, so would I. Captain Rottingham, you're being paged. Take a message. Paged? They, uh, you should have said that they, you, there's a message already. That would have made him leave. You know, sitting down for too long can be unhealthy. It's a serious risk to your cardiovascular system. Yeah. I think a nice jog could be just what you need right about now. Up and at him. Go away. Well, he's definitely not listening to us. You seem busy. I'll come back later. So we need to use trickery in getting him off the chair. Because I want to talk to him. But he won't talk to me unless... Ruddingham here leaves. And remember when he said that about the comment that he's bald? You know what lice is? It's a terrible infestation in the hair, right? 
Just watch. Ew. Holy infestation! You've been struck with the hair demons. What are you talking about? The cursed head vermin. The scourge of every hygienic sailor on the seven seas. That's a lie. Sure as I'm standing here, they're wriggling about your scalp like a pack of wretched sea lions. Good analogy. Mm -hmm. This calls for drastic action. I'm bringing in old Ironsides. No, no, let's not be too rash. Rash? That's a bad sign. Definitely. There's no time to lose. I'm going to have to amputate. No, no, you ruined my hair. That's the point. Damn, he's good. Love that smile. <laughs> so that was it. We got rid of Rottingham. So let's talk to him. Ahoy there. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, here to serve all your mighty pirate needs. Awesome. Pleasure to meet you, Guybrush. I am Haggis McMutton of the Clan McMutton. Haggis McMutton. So he's a uh, uh, a sheep's stomach filled with intestines and stuff. Muck beef. Well, mutton is not beef, but you know what I mean. He's food. Haggis. That's an unusual name. I suppose it is. But Haggis is just a nickname. The given name is heart, liver, and kidneys boiled in the stomach of the animal mutton. Oh, so your parents were expecting a girl. Yay. How is that a girl's name? I guess it's because it starts with heart. How did you become a barber pirate? I spent ten years at sea on board the HMS Anathema, the fastest ship in the Scottish Navy. I wonder so what I, Anathema I means. A barber pirate. It was a clip of ship. Ah. Funny. I wonder what Anathema means. Could mean something. It must mean something. I'm sure to look it up later. Anathema. And really, a clipper ship, you know, scissors, stuff. So you started this salon? Aye, but not on my own. I grew to love hairstyling so much that I told two of my best friends about it. And then they told two friends. Aye, and they told two friends, and so on and so on. That's how those things go, you know. I want to know more about safe hair replacement systems. Ah, there's no such thing. It's no proper to fool with the course of nature. Yeah. Better just let it go naturally and, and stop. Do you know any rousing pirate stories? Well, there is the story of the secret of Bulky Island. We were a crew of two score men under the command of Big Jake McJuggernaut, the most powerful captain on the seas. One night in port, Captain Jake heard the tale of an enormous treasure buried somewhere on Bulky Island. Bulky. He set sail and landed on the island within a fortnight. And found the treasure the next morning. Reminds me of Dinky Island. How big a treasure are we talking about here? Immense. An inconceivable amount of gold, silver, jewels, and coupons for discounts at area restaurants. Ooh. Oh, it was a beautiful sight. A tremendous chest made of solid gold. Nice. Big Jake leapt into the hole and wrapped his sinewy arms around the chest. Sinewy? He gathered his resolve, counted to three, Filled his lungs and lifted with all his might. The sound of his back cracking brought a grimace to even the most steel-hearted crewmen. By nightfall, the lot of us were lying on the beach, writhing in pain. So your captain was called Big Jake McJuggernaut, and he was a sinewy, well, guy brush looking guy. Funny. Hmm. Yeah, I wanted to flood the hole and let the chest float out. It was made of solid gold with lots of treasure, guy brush. It wouldn't float. Why didn't you work in pairs or groups of three or four? That would have been the weak man's way out. They're Scottish. The pirate Angus McFolkham had followed us to Bulky Island, wanting the treasure for himself. The weakling used a lever and took the chest, laughing at us as he carried it to his ship. And my proud Captain McJuggernaut died in traction, cussing himself for not being strong enough. Poor Captain. What is that blue stuff in the jar anyway? Ah, the old comb juice. 
Tis a fiery brew that's bested many a sailor with her fermented froth. It'll burn your throat unless you chase it with conditioner. So in other, other words, it's just blue alcohol. Well, it keeps the combs, you know, uh, sanitized. Kind of like you, you, you use for medical equipment and everything. Just rub it with oil. Oil. Alcohol. Rub it with oil. What am I talking about? Rub it with oil and go slick, slicker through when, when you cut people. Oil. Those sure are nice scissors. I did my best, Pierre. They can cut through almost anything. Well, why are they in the ceiling? Sometimes I cut hair so fast, the scissors fly from my hands at unbelievable speeds. I wonder if you have caused a lot of accidents with that speed. Could I uh, borrow those scissors for a minute? Sorry, no. They're much too valuable to me. You know they can cut through almost anything. Yes, I believe you mentioned that. Yeah, you did. When I think of all I could do with those scissors... I... The scissors are just that good. Did I mention how nice those scissors are? You did, and it's all true. They're the best pair I've ever owned. And they can cut through anything. Yep, that's what you said. Please, let me borrow those scissors. Sorry, but no. Why won't you even take them off the ceiling if they're your best pair? I mean, this is your best. Why not take them out? I'm, never mind. Never mind. Actually, I need to talk to him again. Because we're gonna get a haircut. I sure could use a haircut. Have a seat, <clears throat> and I'll do you up with a fine quaff. Ooh, a quaff. Sounds good. He could use a quaff. At least get rid of his ponytail. Although it's not too bad. Kind of a nice ponytail he's got going there. I can't there. reach it. I'm too low. Well, let's use the handle. No, nothing happening here. Ugh, blast that ineffectual paperweight. I'll have to go find another. But what about my haircut? Keep your skirt on, lad. And you keep yours on. Now let's use the handle more. Yeah, a little more. Come on, grind brush. A little more. How high can that go? Nope! Ugh. I hate when that happens. Now use the barber chair. Now use the handle. Some more. You can do it, Guybrush. You can do it. Or I should better say, I can do this. And now the scissors, and we pick them up. There. Got the scissors. Phew. Well, I searched the whole island, and I couldn't have found a single rock for a paperweight. That was fast. I suppose I'll just have to eyeball your haircut. I just remembered I have another appointment. Oh, I was going to give you a French braid, too. Braid? No, thank you. We don't need braids around here. I don't know why I talked in that stupid accent. That's pretty much what we can do for now. So how about we go to the beach? And next time on Curse of Monkey Island, we're gonna talk to this very uh, a very sour looking cabana boy and also search the beach if we can get in there and do things so I hope you all have a good evening good afternoon and a good morning and we will see you next time take care people bye